Good morning. Can you all hear me? Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see that we have back benches and we have front benches as well. I have to warn the back benches that the numbers are going to be very small. So in case you cannot see it, please feel free to come up in front here. So once again, good morning, and it's good to have all of you here. And uh, before I go on, I'm going to give this particular statement that I'm making three times as I give this particular talk itself. Number one, this is a statement that you must remember. Whatever you see, whatever you hear here, do not go out and take immediate actions. In a sense, I would like and expect you to actually talk to your financial advisors. Please remember, because it's your own hard-earned sweat money, you want to make sure that you do all the due diligence as you look at the investment. So allow me to go in very, very quickly. My name is Wilson Tan. I'm from CMT, which is Capital Mall Trust. And it is my pleasure to be here today to spend some time with you. And I hope to give the whole presentation to you in 30 minutes. This is the disclaimer. I know you will not be able to read it all, so I would also not bore you with it. Allow me to share with you three areas that I'm going to talk about. The first one is, what is REIT? What is a REIT? The second one is, why are REITs important to you? And the last one is, how would you go about evaluating the REIT? The first two portions, I'm going to go through very briefly and give you an overview of what REIT is all about. In the third portion, which is, how do you evaluate? We will go out and sacrifice. We will go out and tell you, for example, a REIT like CMT, how would you go about actually evaluating it? So I'm using CMT as an example. So giving it as an example will allow you to find better understanding in terms of how you go about considering other REITs as well. So that's what we're going to do. So first and foremost is, what is REIT? Everyone have heard about real estate the Improvement Trust. So what is this all about? Over the next couple of slides, I try to explain this. As best as I can, I will try and explain it without technical jargon. If you catch me out for the technical jargon, please feel free to ask me to explain it a little bit more, especially during the Q&A time. Very simply, many of us are Asians, and as Asians, we are trained in one thing in one way, and that is go out and buy property, 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 property. And the point is, properties are not easy to come by. Cost of the acquiring the property is going to be very expensive. REIT is a way whereby we can go out and acquire a series of properties with as low investment as $1,000, $2,000. And that's basically what REIT is about. It is really about a vehicle that you see here. A vehicle where you have a portfolio of, of assets. And as you have this portfolio of assets, how do you go about generating income, getting income from this portfolio of assets? That's all. A REIT is basically a vehicle, a platform, an instrument where you have a portfolio of assets. And with this portfolio of assets, it helps to generate the income, which we call a yield. A REIT is a very interesting asset class. A REIT is somewhere between a bond, which is technically risk-free if you look at it from a government bond perspective, and an equity, whereby there would be more risk. So what you have is a new asset class called a REIT, which is truly sandwiched between that. Why? You'll hear me speaking on it time and time again. It produces a yield. It produces a dividend. It produces something that you can take back, usually on a quarterly, a semi-annually, and an annually basis. At the same time, there is also an element of risk. Because of this element of risk, there is some possibility for growth. That's what a REIT is. I wanted you all to be aware of that the REIT is not something that was invented only yesterday. 
a reed has been around as early back as 1961, and it started in the United States of America. At that time, President Eisenhower decided to go out and see how he could meet the needs of commoners who wanted to invest in properties. And that was enacted as a bill way back in 1960. In 1961 was where they had the first REIT in America. Today, REITs in the US continue to be the largest in the whole world. In 1969, Netherlands did the same thing. And back here, we have here as in Australia, and in Asia Pacific, that's where Australia became the next REIT operator. And Singapore, by the way, we started our REITs in 2002. I'm pleased to inform you also that in Singapore, you have different kind of REITs that's available. You can see here that you have REITs from retail, you have office, industrial, and hospitality. These are the different kind of REITs that you have in Singapore itself. Clearly, all these REITs would have their own, perhaps, things that they have to consider about. Uh, cutting across in land scarce Singapore, land supply becomes important. The general economy is important as you look at the different types of REIT itself. Specifically, in the different kinds of REITs itself, you would also have their nuances. For example, when you look at retail, uh, tourist arrivals, occupancy cost, that is rental itself becomes important. If you look at office, you can see things like employment. You can see also things with regards to the business environment becomes important. So these are the different things that you have to look at. Some people may now ask, so what do I invest in? Where do I invest in? At the end of the day, you need to know what's your own appetite. You need to know also which particular sector which you want to invest in. Do you want to invest in office? Do you want to invest in industrial? By the way, office and industrial sometimes give you better yield. Why? Usually the tenure, meaning the time for that particular land that you can use. The land is usually only used for 30 years or 60 years because it's a shorter period of time. You can expect also a better yield from office, and from industrial. So that is also a tendency to have a little bit more fluctuation. So that's something that you need to, to, to dive in a little bit deeper and then understand your own appetite. So whether you want to go to retail, which is very consistent and I'll show you later on, or any other REITs. This gives you an idea of the size of REIT that we have. Uh, in terms of an asset class. And you can see also that in Singapore, uh, this is uh, dated back into uh, last year, end of 2011 itself. And according to CBRE, you can see that we have 26 REITs. Today, actually, you would find that there are 29 REITs. Some of it are business trusts, some of it are real estate investment trusts. This gives you an idea of the REIT that we have in Singapore. The size of the bubble indicates the size of the REIT itself. CMT, Capital Mall Trust itself, was first introduced in 2002 July. And it is by far the largest REIT in Singapore from a market capitalization basis. It is the largest REIT in Singapore. So we talk about what is REIT very briefly. We know about the history of it. It's been around for more than 50 years. It's a stable asset class that we see. It generates dividend, and there is some potential for certain growth in there. But why do we want to go and look at the REIT? Why is REIT interesting for us? I want to provide you with some of the benefits why we would consider REIT, and also some of the risks from a REIT standpoint. If you look at it, property is not very liquid. There are times whereby there will be booms, there will be times whereby there will be market dips. It is also not so quick and easy for us to go out and buy and sell properties. Unlike an equity, unlike a stock, a REIT is actually placed in the stock exchange itself. 
and it can be traded like an equity. It can be traded like a stock. And because of that, it has better liquidity. Tax transparency, something that's not, so, something that perhaps not every one of us is familiar with, and that is a REIT does not pay tax. And there is a certain set of rules and regulations around it. And the rules and regulations is that it must distribute at least 90% of its taxable income. Meaning, a REIT, as it goes out and generate rental, that becomes a taxable income. But if they go out and distribute 90% of it, it is not taxable at the REIT level. And then that's transferred over to the unit holders. Unlike equities, we call them stockholders. For REITs, we call them unit holders. This is why you see also the dividends part that we talk about, where dividends up to 90% and above, it is mandatory for a REIT to go out and distribute the money, the income, the profits. And that's basically how the REIT works, right? If you look at that, uh, there is also different kind of properties because a REIT is a vehicle and on this vehicle, you have different assets. So it's a portfolio of assets. That's one thing that you can look at. And the other thing that you may want to consider is, are you interested in office? Are you inter interested in industrial, hospitality or retail? The choice is yours. There is diversification of portfolio. There is also specialization. Last but not least, least, a REIT is certainly monitored and regulated. In fact, there are two bodies that regulate the REIT itself. Number one would be the SGX itself. Because it is a listed vehicle, there are areas that a REIT need to comply to SGX. The other thing is the REIT is also what we call a collective investment scheme and that is being regulated by the Central Bank of Singapore. And that regulation can be very, very onerous. And that is very good for us as investors because we know that there are two organisations that regulates a REIT. And that gives us more assurance and we can sleep better at night. Let me give you the second time the warning. At the end of the day, as you go through all this presentation, as you hear it all, if you want to make any investment, please consult and do a lot more homework. All right? That's the second time that I'm, I'm sounding this particular uh, statement to you all, and I'll do it one last time at the end of the day. Let me now talk about the next part of it, which is the risk itself. We talk about the benefits, so there must also be risk. There is also a volatile marketplace that we need to con uh, contend with. So how do you ha handle the ups and downs? Th there is ups and downs in the stock market. Because the REIT is a listed entity on the stock exchange, you can also expect it to be volatile. So that's something that you need to look at. Think again also as we talk about the business risk itself. When the economy goes up, things goes up. When the economy goes down, things goes down. How come it is so? When the economy goes up, there, is a, there, there are more demands on office space, industrial space, retail space, hospitality space. So you would see rental going up. But when the economy goes down, there is the possibility for rentals or income to come down. So it is volatile. There is some, that is something that you need to contend with. There, there are business risks that you need to look at. In industrial, in office, if the economy is really, really bad, what would you expect? Closures of companies, closures of industries, and potentially also leaving those industrial properties, leaving those office space. Think through. Last part is management. Risk of management. Do take a hard look at who the, the managers are for the REITs itself. Do they have a reputation? Have they been around for a long time? What successes have you been able to see and observe from the past? 
a property you know very well that there will be wear and tear. As there's wear and tear, how do you ensure that the quality of that property remains at a consistent and high level? And that's something that you need to contend with. You need to know. So management, who manages the REIT becomes something very, very important. And there is risk there. People come and go, but most important of all, how the manager is able to institutionalize the quality management of the properties and therefore giving you the confidence that they will be able to mitigate and reduce the risk. Next spin. This is where I will try and bring in the CMT as an example. And as you look at evaluation, how do you go about evaluating it? I want to stress that this is not an exhaustive class on how you evaluate a REIT itself. So this is some areas that you would think through, you would consider as you look at REITs. Right? So this is not exhaustive and there are many other areas that you would evaluate. However, these are some of the major areas that one would look at. These are the four things that I thought that we would be able to cover uh, very quickly. What does the REIT invest in? And we already spoke a little bit about it, but I will dive in a little bit deeper to give you some ideas on it. Who is the REIT manager? What's the background, which I alluded to earlier on, and I think it's important for us to recognize who the REIT manager is, whether we have confidence in the REIT manager itself. Are there any dividend distribution policy? I spoke about why it is important for a REIT, for tax transparency reason, to go out and actually distribute their dividends itself. So let's go out and find out a little bit more about their dividend policy and also try and find out how they have been doing over the last couple of years. So that gives you an idea of what is the pattern, if I may say, for us to look at all these things. And last but not least, are the cash flows stable? Are the cash flows positive? I don't want to go into jargons of it all, but what a REIT can do is to distribute their cash profit, not necessarily the accounting <laughs> profit. This is something that we can discuss out, uh, out of this place, but I just want you to know that whatever cash flow that comes in, basically, they can actually go out and distribute it all. And that's basically what a REIT is all about. So let me cover this by way of an example. If you look at um, why would we invest in a REIT itself, I, I thought that I would go back uh, through to about 1975 and give you three REITs, sorry, three classes of REITs, three types of REITs, uh, or three categories of businesses that you can look at. And these are principally, it's, it's very small, blue, which is for shops, which is retail, office, which is the red or orange one that you see there, and industrial, that's green. And what I've done in this particular case from urban uh, URA itself, trace it all the way from 1975 to track how these different sectoral groups have been doing over time. And you can see very clearly that if you want to have big gains and you also want to, and you have an appetite for risk itself, offices is by far having the largest swing. Meaning when the economy goes very well, there's a tight market for office space, you can see the swing going up. For example, in 1980s through to the 1981. And again, you see that in 94, 95, 93 through to 95 area, and so on and so forth. So when economy goes well, you see office booms. This is recession, and you can see how it is with recession. When recession sets in, because you have all these peaks here, you also experience the valleys. You also experience the downturn, and the downturn comes very, very quickly. To a certain extent, that's also true for the industrial part. You can see the industrial part also tracks very similarly to the office. Industrial, SMEs. Right now, there is an upswing that we can look at and people are looking for spaces to build. 
people are looking for spaces to actually uh, create products and all that. So that's something that you can see in industrial, it goes up. So you want to bear in mind that if you are prepared and you have that appetite in terms of risk profile and all, then yes, office and industry seems pretty good because you have the highs and you have the lows. Contrary to all this, certainly there's also some movements you can see for shops itself. Shops, which is retail principally, also follow the same cycle, but the troughs and the dips are not so significant. They are a little bit more even. So I suggest to all of you, we hear that Singapore is Kiasi, Kiasu. So because if you are Kiasi and Kiasu, that's something that we want to take a look at, right? Because it's a little bit more stable from a retail, from a shop area. And I will tell you over the next couple of slides why that is so. So then you can understand why we have the Kiasi and the Kiasu mentality. And that's something that we can look at. I thought that I would jump in straight and give you an idea of the shops itself because I can't cover everything. So I, I thought I would give you an example from a retail shop because that is by far, it seems, less modulation in terms of ups and downs uh, from the market standpoint. This is all the way from 93 through to the first quarter of 2012. And it's very relevant. You can't see the small print here, but this is from uh, Jones Lang and DTZ itself. The green line is actually Orchard Road rental. And you can see that in Orchard Road rental, this is in 19... 93 itself. This that you see here is in and during the Asian financial crisis. Then it went up. When you see here, this is during this part here. This is during the global financial crisis. And you can see that Orchard Road rentals actually followed that. But having said that, Orchard Road rentals continue to be relatively constant. Now look at what happened in the suburban area. In the suburban area, even though there is a crisis in 89, in 98, 90, uh, 97, 98, this is where you have the Asian financial crisis, it remains pretty constant. Once the financial crisis passes on, it moves up. Yes, there's a very, very small dip here for the suburban area when there is actually a global financial crisis. And yet after that, it smoothed us out itself. That tells you the resilience of retail, the resilience of shopping asset class itself as a REIT. The, why is this important? This is important because this shows the potential revenue income for the REIT itself. And when you talk about a potential revenue income, you talk about the possibility for this to be converted into yields. And therefore, when you see a consistency in the area of income generated by the REIT itself, that's something that you would want to look at. Consistency in income generated by the REIT, by the asset class, that becomes important. i give you an idea. Again, uh, uh, this is what we say. We open up the kimono and we show you a little bit about CMT, Capital Mall Trust. And this shows you and gives you an idea of the portfolio that is within CMT itself in the sense of the tenants that they have. I want you to know, and you may not be able to see it here, I want you to know that the top 10 tenants within the CMT group only contribute 20% of the income, the gross revenue for the organization. Meaning, the top 10 tenants only contribute 20%. The 80% of the income comes from everybody else. And that's very, very important. So that gives you an idea too that, oh, okay, in this particular asset, in this particular REIT itself, only 10 tenants contribute 20%. The rest comes from across the board. Again, gives you a degree of confidence in terms of the fluctuation. It's important to note also that these are all the different uh, profile uh, trade categories that we call here. So 
So 27.3, you can't see it here, it's F and B. 27.3% of the revenue comes from F and B. 13.6% comes from fashion, and 9% comes from beauty and health, the likes of the Watsons, the like of the Unity, and so on and so forth. So you can see also, this is the distribution of gross revenue for the REIT itself. Pretty well distributed out. Again, you know, Singaporeans, we love to do one thing, and the one thing that we love to do is to makan, right? So that's why F&B is so high up there. About 27.3% is all about makaning. <laughs> so that's important for all of us, right? Every time we ask each other, we see each other, Chia pa boy, suda makan da, you know? That's generally what we do. And that's why it is so important for us to see that this is how we reflect also to the cultural norms of Singapore. I give you also uh, what does the REIT invest in, and very quickly, I, I know my time is running out, I've been flashed a couple of times. Uh, in this particular case, very quickly, CMT is a Singapore play, so we do not have that element of currency risk, for example. i give you an example in India itself. If a REIT is investing in a place like India, we need to recognize that the bank rates in India is about 8%. The government bonds is about 8.2% or thereabout, depending on when and uh, the timing and all that. So, at the end of the day, a property must yield very, very high returns because this is the cost that they have to go out. Bank loans is at least 8% plus. So, once you think through about all this, you want to to consider would you want to invest in a REIT which is Singapore-based or you want to invest in a REIT that has actually assets out of Singapore. And that's important to consider. Clearly, for REITs that's outside of Singapore, there is also going to be potentially more growth, more risk, more growth. The key here is how do you balance growth and also the yield itself. Talk a little bit about the REIT manager. I spoke a little on the REIT manager and I thought that I would give you some uh, heads up. REITs in Singapore, as in the past in the US also, a REIT always have a sponsor. In this particular case, for CMT, the sponsor of the REIT is part of the Capital Land family and the sponsor of it is known as Capital Mall Asia. Basically, this helps to also allow for malls that are being developed by Capital Mall Asia to then be transferred, subject to the unit holder's approval to the REIT itself. And I'll show you later on some examples of what had happened in the past. So again, you can recognize. So having a REIT manager that understands the asset, that understands how to do the property management, that understands how to do the project management of the asset itself, because the asset must undergo what we call asset enhancement. This becomes important. So the quality of the asset manager becomes important. How they go about acquiring new assets, how they go about looking at opportunities that's out there. And last but not least, of course, would be the management fees. How do they go about handling the management fees? <coughs> This is an important slide, and those of you who are behind, you will not be able to see it. But what we wanted to do here was to list out from 2002 through to 2011, and we wanted to show CMT. When CMT first came on board, it had three properties. And these were the three properties, uh, Funan, Junction 8, and also Tampanese Mall. After they had the three properties, the last nine years, we, as in CMT, acquired another 13 properties, one tree, making a total of 16 properties. Now, the 13 properties that we acquired, only three properties came from our sponsors. And that shows also the responsibility of the REIT manager itself. Not everything comes from the sponsor. A good REIT manager will go out and see whether there are opportunities out there. A good 
REIT manager will go out and make sure that they protect the interests of the unit holders. So all in all, you saw that over the last nine years, 13 properties were bought and only three properties came from the sponsors. The next slide, I will show you what are the returns to the three properties that was bought from the sponsors. So you can also understand, hmm, as they buy these properties, they also have that return. I want you to know also that this year, CMT also sold one property because they CMT found that there is no way that they can maximize it. And the best way to maximize it and returning it back to uh, the business itself would be through the sales of that property. So Aukang was a place that we sold. Aukang Plaza was something that we sold. All right? Let me go through again. The three properties. These are the three properties that CMT bought from their sponsors over the last nine years. And the other 10 properties were actually purchased outside from the sponsors itself. Look at the returns. Some of you may not be able to see. Plaza Singapura, we bought it in 2004, and it returned now 55% in terms of valuation gain. 55% in terms of valuation gain. And that's what we see. Raffles City, which is not too far away from here. We bought it in 2006. Now there is a 32% gain in terms of the valuation. Last but not least is Clark Key. There is an 18% gain 2010 to 2012. This also means one, one thing, that the, the REIT manager is putting a lot of investments into the property, and as they go about investing in the property itself, you are able to see also how that particular asset becomes more, gain more in terms of valuation. And that's basically what a good REIT manager will be able to do. This is also important. Uh, how do you go about looking at a dividend? And how do you, what's the frequency of this dividend here? CMT, we distribute dividend on a quarterly basis. And we have been able to see, I've been always reminded uh, that over the last 10 years, meaning over the last 40 quarters, we, as in CMT, has been providing dividend, have been providing the use that our unit holders is looking at. And that's the consistency that we are looking at, right? What I will also share with you is on the next slide itself, uh, roughly what we are getting in terms of the yield, we're looking at about 5% today. So if you buy an investment in CMT itself, at today's price, roughly, you will get about a 5% yield. Compare this to what you would get from your CPF ordinary account, which all of us have, Compare this also to a government 10-year bond, which is about 1.6 to 1.8, depending on the time that they sold it. And then also, what's the straight times index and what's the straight time real estate index itself. And you can see that we're delivering at 5%. Are there any other REITs out there that's giving more than 5%? Yes, there is. Are they in the same asset class? Yes, there is. So I, I just want you to be aware that there are. Having said that, I just want you to know that from a CMT standpoint, it's the oldest REIT, it's the largest REIT, and in many ways, I'm confident to tell you that it is a very, very stable REIT because over the last 40 quarters, 4-0, four it has consistently been giving out dividend and yield. That's something that the rest of it, you need to go out and make your own uh, judgment. This gives you an idea of uh, the last 10 years in terms of the growth for the stock price or the unit price and also the dividend that CMT has been paying out. And you can see that we are talking about 192.3% gain in the total returns itself since 2002. So somebody investing in 2002 will experience a 192%, almost close to 200% gain in their portfolio. Let me share with you one other uh, information. When 
CMT was uh, first listed way back in July of 2002. Uh, the whole capitalization was only about 700 million. Today, that whole portfolio has grown and that capitalization, and I'm happy to inform you, is now $6.4 billion. So 10 years ago, it was only $700 million, and now it's $6.4 billion, more than nine times increase in capitalization. And that gives you, again, a sense and a degree of confidence in the organization, per se. More important, a degree of confidence in the managers who manages this particular REIT. These are the cash flows. Uh, because of how we go out and give up, so to speak, all our uh, profits to the unit holders itself, how we manage the cash flow becomes very, very important. How do we manage, for example, our debt becomes very important because we do have debt. Because if you go out and transfer everything back to the uh, unit holders, then you need to go out and manage you need to handle uh, the debt issues itself. So having a good handle on the debt is very, very important. I just want you to be aware of this, that we are again very pleased that we have been able to achieve this. CMT is by far the only organization that has the highest Moody's rating for REITs in Singapore. So we enjoy a very, very high rating, meaning Moody's came in, go through our books and say, hmm, this is what CMT is doing. And you know what? Because of the things that they've been doing, we will give them an A2 rating. And CMT enjoys an A2 rating from Moody, which is the highest among the REITs. Why is that important? It is important because if we are not rated, we're not going to be able to borrow at a price that is what we are enjoying today. Because we are rated, because people say that, because Moody says that, hey, this is very stable, very well managed, and therefore the financial institutions are prepared to go out and give us a loan that is lower than what they would give to other organizations, for example. I'm coming to the end. Uh, I, I'll take another two, two odd minutes. Uh, stable cash flow. You see also for CMT, majority of the portfolio that we have is in suburban malls, meaning necessity shopping. So necessity shopping is about 73.1%, almost 75%, while discretionary shopping is about 26.9%. So you can see that the portfolio that we have is all about necessity shopping. What's necessity shopping? Well, you need to go out. This place happens to be NTUC. You need to go to NTUC to buy your rice, to buy your sugar, and so on and so forth. That's necessity shopping. And majority of our revenue comes from necessity shopping. This is my last slide. If you are looking at REITs, the whole universe of REITs, there are two areas that you need to look at. You would see there's a yield component. You would also see that there's a potential growth component. I want to hasten, I want to add at this point in time, when you buy REITs, you do not buy for growth. You buy for a stability of income. You buy for peace of mind. You buy for the fact that at night you can sleep. That's so very important. That's what you're looking at, the yield, the yield, the yield. You know that when you put something in here in CMT, you get your 5%. Having said that, I've also shared with you that there is also potential for a certain small amount of growth. So there's a stability and also a little bit of growth. Not to the extent that you would see from an equity, but certainly a bond, you will not see it grow. But in this case, a read, a CMT read, will show you that particular growth. Let me share with you the third time. The information that you have here is to provide you with a little bit more information, more understanding of the REIT market. But at the end of the day, as you go out and make your investment choice, make it wisely and do go out and seek expert consultation. And I know SIAS SIAS is a good organization that will be able to provide that to you. So thank you very much and enjoy yourself.